We waited two years for Frontier Developments to release fleet carriers for Elite Dangerous. We were supposed to get them last year, but they were delayed. So now they're they're out now in beta, and some people are testing them. Specifically, some of the big Elite Dangerous YouTubers like Commander Exegius, City and Ant, and Yamex. Exegius he represents the 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 players that Frontier Developments bends over backwards to please. These are the griefers and the PvP players. People who love content, you know, being bounty hunters or being pirates and griefers. These are the people that Frontier Development caters to the most. And so Commander Exegius is their spokesman. He's, he's the biggest YouTube spokesman for Elite Dangerous for that player demographic. And they are the ones that Frontier Development bends the knee to almost constantly. Obsidian Ant, he's more for the explorer in the game. He's more for them, more the more the, the casual explorers of the game. And Yamix, Yamix, he's the thorn in Frontier Development's ass that just stays there and he's this, he's this, this pinching pain in their backside because he just will not let up on calling out the developers for their bullshit, for, for how they build this game and what they what they are doing this game and the direction that they're that they're taking it. So Exegius went and he was a beta testing the carriers and he ran the numbers. These things are not great. In fact, they're pretty awful, actually. The initial purchase price is five billion which is not a problem. You can actually earn $5 billion in the game pretty easily. You know, if you really dedicate yourself, you can do it with passenger missions or even mining. And Frontiers made mining somewhat interesting with, you know, deep core mining where you can go in and you can shatter an asteroid and get to the really good, you know, lucrative stuff on the inside. They've made that actually a little fun doing that. So you can you can easily make up the five billion dollars that you need in order to buy one of these things, but that's just the purchase price. That's before you add on the modules to add functionality to the thing. And then there's the weekly upkeep. Now the initial weekly upkeep is about 15 million. That's doable for a lot of people. But that's if you stay in the bubble. Because if you take this thing out into the bubble, you know, you may not be able to maintain that upkeep. And when you add on modules for adding on services, similar services that you find on the space station, like shipyards and repair and livery and a marketplace and even a black market. You can have a, even have a black market on the ship. I believe there's also services for doing bounties where you can turn in bounty vouchers uh, on the on the uh, fleet carrier so it very much caters to you know your traders and miners and your PvP players and people who, who hunt other players with bounties or hunt NPCs with bounties it, it very much caters to them but the one group of players that get boned hard by frontier developments time and time again are explorers now oh, here, 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 here's here's an example of what I mean, where where explorers get really boned. As I said, these other players they make their money through you know turning in bounty vouchers or doing passenger missions or mining or doing trade. You know you can make your money with that. Explorers make their money one way and one way and only. Scan data. We traveled the galaxy, and in, in Elite Dangerous, there, it is a one-to-one -one model of the Milky Way galaxy. Every star in the game, or most every star in the game, has a real-world equivalent in the Milky Way because it was built using NASA data. So, And there are so many stars that it would take hundreds of years for the players to search them all. So there's still a lot of systems out there that are unexplored. 
you go out there and you scan there those systems and you look for planets with rich resources or water worlds or earth-like planets which are worth a lot more and then you come back and you go to a space station and you go to a universal cartography uh, screen on the space station and you sell your scan data that's how I bought an anaconda when I traveled from the bubble to Colonia to Sagittarius A and back I scanned multiple systems and you get a bonus for being the first person to discover a system I discovered a lot of systems and I got a big bonus for that and that paid for my anaconda which is over a hundred million credits I think somewhere between 100 to 150 million credits to get one of those ships and an anaconda is a very versatile craft fully kitted out and fully you know upgraded and engineered you can jump pretty far with those it's a very good ship for exploration and also for you know bounty hunting and even mining it's a it's a very versatile ship it's sort of the swiss army knife uh spaceship of elite dangerous everybody wants to get one it's the ship to get when you are a new player but these things these these carriers are utterly worthless utterly useless especially for explorers whom frontier development is just bones constantly and we're boned pretty hard by this because there's no universal cartographer on the ship and they have no plans to add one so we have no way of making money on the ship while exploring so what do you have to do you have to grind to earn the money to buy the ship and outfit it for the services that you want it to have fine then you have to grind again do a long grind to build up the money you need in order to cover the upkeep cost while you have the ship in the black so you have to build up billions in credit hundreds of billions in credits in order to pay the upkeep to have it out in space for as long as you want to be able to have it. So if you want to be able to have it out in, a, out in space for a year, you've got to grind for a long time, time that you're not spending out in the black exploring like the way you want. For the longest time, explorers, again, being boned by frontier developments, because in order to be able to get the jump ranges that uh, explorers need to you know, travel out into the galaxy at a reasonable speed from one star system to another, you had to strip your ship down. You had to take out components, you had to downgrade components, you had to take off armor, you had to re you know, downgrade your shields, remove your weapons and everything in order to get really optimal jump ranges and that makes your ship vulnerable to attack very vulnerable to attack because if you're if you're out there for a year exploring and you're getting scan data from systems and you come back it takes one asshole to ruin it all to just all that to wipe out all that work you did because you have um, different stuff you carry on your ship. You, you can have a cargo bay to carry cargo. If your ship is destroyed, you, of course, lose the cargo. But you also have materials for synthesis. And this is used to replenish your auto field repair system. It can be used to uh, rearm your ship if, you if you're carrying any kind of weapons on board. Like you're, if you still have guns on your ship, you can rearm your ship with that. You can rearm. Um, different components and systems repair different systems with it so you don't lose those materials you don't lose them and they're they're stored separately from the cargo in your cargo bay so if your ship is destroyed you don't lose them well you don't lose that but you lose your scan data you don't get your scan data back. You get all those materials back, but you you don't get your scan data back. And so if you're out in the black for a year or more, some people some people spend years out in the black not coming back to civilization and only come back just to sell their data. It takes only one asshole with an interdictor 
to pull you out of out of Super Cruise, blow your ass up, and all that work is erased. This ship could prevent all that. You could explore, you know, jump out to the max range, 500 light years, and then use it as a base of operations to explore a large bubble around the ship. Come back and sell the data. Jump to the next spot. Explore all around, come back, sell the data. You could do that, but it doesn't have the module for that, and they have no plans to add that module to the ship. So it's utterly useless for explorers. Completely useless for explorers. Oh, oh, and, and it takes two hours to get anywhere. You have a spin-up time of one hour to jump. And you can dock on the ship and jump with it when it jumps. Then when it gets there, there's another hour cooldown. So you have to wait an hour for it to jump. And then once you get there, you have to wait another hour in order to jump again. And it only jumps about 500 light years. And a fully kitted, out kitted, now outfitted, engineered anaconda can do that in just a uh, um, less than an hour. If you use the Neutron Superhighway, if you supercharge your frameship drive at a Neutron Star, you can travel the vast distance between the bubble and Colonia in an hour and a half. Normally a distance that takes several days to travel normally through, through hyperspace. Through jumping from one star system to another at your maximum jump range for the Anaconda, which that normally takes several days, can be done in an hour and a half if you use the neutron stars. You can't with this ship. You can't do that with this um, with this fleet carrier. So you can only jump 500 light years, and it takes two hours to get anywhere. Two hours. This thing is utterly useless for its purpose. Oh, and to restock the ship. You have to do it from specific places in the bubble. You can't restock at any specific station. So that station that's at Sagittarius A that was recently uh, recently built, you can't stock there. You can't stock at the station that they're planning to build at uh, Beagle Point. You can't stock there. You can't stock at any of the stations in Colonia. You can't do that there either only specific places in the bubble. This thing was designed to keep you in the bubble. And it should have been built for squadrons. Squadrons are sort of a guild for Elite Dangerous. It's, it is for groups of players to work together and pool their resources. This thing should have been able to where you could you could have people you know, donate credits to keep the upkeep on this ship. And, and for people to be able to stock it and be able to operate it and everything. This would have been perfect for squadrons to be able to operate and run, run you know, trading operations out of or bounty hunting operations where they could jump into a system and use it as a base of operations for everything that they do. But no, it's, it's a ship for just individuals. It's not specifically for squadrons doesn't really offer anything for squadrons. I'm sure they can you can land at your ship, but that's about it. You know, they can they can sell stuff in your market if you have a market on the ship, you know, or 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 store store their um, ship modules and stuff there, but th that's it. That's it. That's that's all it's it's really useful for. And the upkeep is just so ridiculously high for a ship with the modules that would make it useful. The grind is just ridiculous, and this game is already massively grindy as it is. It's already massively grindy as it is. So, Exegius, his recommendation is don't touch it. And Yamex, Yamex is threatening to leave Elite Dangerous. You know, he's he's a big time you know, Elite Dangerous player. You know, his his whole YouTube career is built around Elite Dangerous. And Yamex is thinking of leaving for Star Citizen. 
and Exegius, if he jumps ship, if he jumps ship, if he decides to leave, he's got a huge following and they'll follow him. They'll leave because he represents a pretty, pretty big uh, uh, demographic in the game. He represents the PvPers, he represents the Griefers, he represents you know the bounty hunters, everybody that loves playing the uh, combat in the game. If he leaves for Star Citizen or No Man's Sky, which got an update recently, big one, then um, this, this game is dead and it's dying already. A lot of people who were in squadrons are complaining that their squadrons are dead. That everybody that they knew who were playing the game religiously has left. There's nobody left. Hundreds of players are just jumping ship. There's not that many people left. The griefers that are playing the game now are complaining that there's not enough people for them to interact with, not enough people for them to attack. They're complaining that they're gone. Most people who are still playing the game have isolated themselves into private groups like Mobius so that they get away from, so they can have some reprieve from the griefers that are constantly going after them because they're so freaking bored because there's nothing else to do in the game. Because there's, there's, you don't, you can't get out of your ship except with an SRV on the surface of a planet, which is the same th surface of the moon, which is the same thing no matter where you go, practically. All you do is you get out in your SRV and you shoot rocks. So, the game's falling apart, and Frontier has made a offhand statement saying, oh, we'll, we'll have to look at the numbers in response to everything that's going on. But the people are telling them, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to be usable, and they're not listening to their community. They're absolutely not listening. Tiger and I have a theory as to why Frontier is doing this, why they are pushing forward with this. These things add a grind. They add a really massive grind to the game. There is one player group, one player group that I know of, who absolutely eat up grind. They absolutely love it. They live and breathe for grind. Two groups, actually. South Korean MMO players and Chinese players. They absolutely love grind. You see their MMOs, Chinese and South Korean MMOs, they are massive grind fests. They love it. We don't like it much here in the West, but they absolutely love it there. That's what this seems to be built for. The other thing that these carriers seem to be built for is RMT. Now, some of you are, some of you should be very familiar with what RMT is. If you play WoW, you've heard of Gold Farmers. If you play Final Fantasy XIV, you've heard of Jill Farmers, where basically, you have these uh, Chinese players who are sometimes work in sweatshop environments, all playing the game to gr get resources, sell them, to build up in-game currency, and then somebody, you know, pays a company, you know, uh, twenty bucks for a million or a billion uh, credits, or, or or a million in gold. For WoW or, or, or a million in Jill in Final Fantasy. These things are going to be used for that. These seem to be perfectly tailor-made for use by RMT. And here's, here's, here's exactly how it will work. Here's exactly how it will work. They'll, they'll have miners go out and, and get um, low temperature diamonds. And they'll stock up their ships with low temperature diamonds. And they'll sell them at a very low cost. 
but they'll and but they'll do it for people who you know go to a website and they pay 20 bucks and they say okay come to this ship and you buy a, um like a certain few hundred you pay, you spend a few hundred credits buying you know several hundred billion credits worth of low temperature diamonds and you take those diamonds and you go to a station where the, the sell price is really high and boom you've got your money that's how they're gonna do it that's how they're going to do it people are leaving elite dangerous by the hundreds their numbers are shrinking and this has got frontier developments concern and this is going to concern their investors how do you raise your you know your your numbers in the game to satisfy the investors without putting in much effort well you cater to the Chinese market you cater to the gold farmers without putting in much effort these ships the effort to build these was not very high oh sure the the artwork is impressive these things look great the animations are great. The sound effects are great. You know, they have lots of animations in them and movement and everything. They're superb. Frontier Developments has great artists. It's just when it comes to designing gameplay, they absolutely suck. So the, these ships were designed, you know, with this in mind. And mark my words, and, and Tiger's in agreement. This is how it's going to be used. And it's going to inflate their numbers for their investors. Why? Because all those RMT players have to buy a copy of the game. They have to buy a copy of the game. Not only do they have to buy a copy of the base game, they also have to buy Horizons, the update, in order to be able to land on planets and mine resources from planet surfaces and do some of the more advanced stuff in space, too. And that will artificially inflate their numbers to placate their investors. That's exactly what they're going to do. And none of us, myself, Tigra, Exegius, Yamex, Obsidian Ant, we don't hold out much hope for what this new era of ex major expansion is going to offer. Because they spent two years making something that was complete garbage and no one's going to use. Two years. And they've been working on this expansion thing for longer than that. And given Frontier's track record, it's not going to be anything special. They could surprise us and it could be something amazing. Or they could do the usual. And it'll be completely lackluster. It won't bring anybody back to the game. It might be might bring some people back to the game for a while, but then when they see that it's that it, it, it was really a big nothing burger, they'll leave again. So Yamex has been threatening to leave the game for Star Citizen. So he's a he's a fairly big YouTuber. He covers covers the game. He's a he's one of the biggest, most outspoken critics of Frontier Developments. He's thinking about leaving. And Commander Exegius may leave. And if he leaves, he's taken a lot of players with him. He has hundreds of thousands of followers. And Obsidian Ant has a big audience too. They jump ship. This game's not going to have much of a future. You know, and Star Citizen, in contrast, you know, um, despite the complete bullshit. Thing that people say that it's a scam it's not um, the game's really been coming together we're getting a real you know a real crime and punishment system with actual teeth not like the toothless crime and punishment system in Elite Dangerous that will discourage griefers it's, it's specifically made to do that why because if you commit a crime you don't just get blown up and die and then respawn. No, you respawn in prison and in order to get out you have to play the prison gameplay. 
and it's not pleasant. You have to, you know, mine in the prison, and you have limited resources to do it, and you have to, you know, earn credits, and you have to spend credits in order to get oxygen for your suit, and better equipment for better mining. You have to actually spend the merits that you earn to get yourself out of prison to get the better equipment that you need in order to earn more credits to get out of prison. And so you can be stuck in there for months. All because you wanted to be an asshole and ram people on the deck at Port All-Star. Because you wanted to be a complete jerk asshole. And ram people on Port All-Star. That's going to be very much discourage that kind of thing. And CIG is wanting to seriously make sure that that gets stopped. This is going to do it. Because this is the, the one thing that griefers hate more than anything. It is responsibility for having to face responsibility for the things they do. They absolutely despise it. And this is going to force them to face the responsibility for the things that they are doing, for the things they've done in game. And they hate it. And it's going to drive them off. And I say good because it's going to leave the people who legitimately want to roleplay as pirates. There's nothing wrong with people playing as pirates. Nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, it's going to be a part of the game's economy. The game's going to get a great economic system that is that is player-driven and is a much better background simulation than what uh, Elite Dangerous has. Because Let's say you're a miner and you find a resource that you can exploit that get, earns you a massive amount of money within a short period of time. Well, if you make over a certain threshold with that, Frontier will nerf it. This, however, this system that um, Star Citizen is going to get, if you find a resource that is extremely lucrative and makes, it, makes a ton of money, well, as you're exploiting this resource you will start glutting the market which will drive the cost drive the um, price down so it won't be as lucrative a material as, uh, as it used to be also there's you know finite storage space at the um, companies and refineries that process these materials that's how it's going to work they, they gone down that deep into the granularity of how this thing works and then they will have NPCs that travel around and move or about move or to processing centers and they'll have actual physical processing centers that process the ores that you collect and everything and then distribute the processed ores to various companies that build the technology and Right now, the way way this game is built, if you lose your ship, you just go to an ASOP terminal, file a claim for your ship, wait about you know two to five minutes depending on which ship it is, and then you get your ship back. That wait could be several days, several hours, or even several days while you wait for your ship to be built. So let's say you had a um, a a Connie a constellation and your ship got destroyed which is easy for the constellation because it's made of tinfoil well you make a claim for the ship what will happen with the new economic system that's coming into the game hopefully sometime this year it will suddenly put out an order for all the raw materials needed in order to build that ship and that will create missions for people to go out and collect those materials through mining, mining asteroids, mining moons, and everything. And NPCs will also go out and do mining as well. And it will bring those materials in, they'll come into the refineries, the refineries will process the materials and they'll be sent out to the companies that build the components that who then, then those built components will be shipped to the companies that assemble your vessel. So it could take hours, days, even weeks for you to get a replacement ship depending on you know how many people are playing 
or um, how many resources are available in a specific area could take time. That's the kind of economic system that Star Citizen is getting. This is so this is Eve Online level stuff that this game is gonna get. It makes what Elite Dangerous has look like, you know, look, look completely sad. Anyway, it's sad to see this happening to Elite Dangerous. I mean, it's not a terrible game. I mean, it's a finished game, yet Star Citizen in its alpha stage is more fleshed out, is more fun, has more to offer. A finished game is worse than an, a buggy alpha game. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you anything. But it, it's not all bad. I mean, the, the ships in Elite Dangerous are fun to fly. It, it, the graphics are beautiful. The VR is extraordinary. If that's the only way to play this game is in VR. And Star Citizen is going to be getting it because they're rewriting the renderer for Vulcan to up the performance. So it, it, it's great with virtual reality. I played Elite Dangerous a lot with virtual reality with, uh, with my uh, you know, Windows Mixed Reality headset and Tiger's played with his HTC Vive. And it's sad to see it happening because the ships are fun to fly. You know, it's fun to go around and explore and see things. But it's being terribly mismanaged by Frontier Developments. And they're catering to the Chinese market. It's the only only answer. That's the only viable answer as to why they're why why they design these carriers the way they have. Anyway. I've been Mike Desorch. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. This and other videos can be found on our alternate channels on LBRY and BitChute. Links are in the description below.